Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and welcome back to another episode of Farming Simulator 17. We're in Goldcrest Valley, and finished last time way over there. We just brought the weeder back to field 12. This guy finished seeding the oilseed radishes over there, and I want to get this guy put away before we start that one new project over there. So we pop into this and get him going. And we may as well go clean some equipment. So let's go, let's see, let me pop out. Am I in the air? Yeah. Okay. So let's head over. Just noticing if the game is laggy. It kind of feels like it is. Turn the corner here and see if that changes. Nope, we're fine. Okay. Last episode, I recorded for oh, a little over two hours and edited it down to, to what you guys saw. And the whole time I was on the very highest settings, went back to those, and there was no lag the whole time. So I really wonder if it isn't the, uh, the pedal uh, in conjunction with the recording software. So I'm not sure. It's kind of random right now. I haven't developed a, a developed, bleh, can't even talk. Haven't developed a pattern that I can, uh, uh, that I can trust yet. Anyway, let's turn this guy off and play with this. How does this guy work? That didn't do it. Okay, so how do you turn him on? It's been a long time since I've used one of these guys. Is this something like E? No. Is it R? Ah, R does it. Okay. So, away from the noise a little bit. It doesn't actually wash the dirt away. Instead, you uh, hold it there for a certain amount of time and the dirt gradually disappears over the entire machine at a time. So, really, just for a matter of realism, you can pretend you're washing it away if you want. But you can go through like this and clean up your equipment. And it gets dirty based upon the settings that you've, uh, you've set for how quickly you want the dirt to, to start clinging to your, your equipment. But, I'd say it's a pretty good job right there. Got those guys both cleaned up. R turns that off. Now, this guy is here. So, we can go through and, and upgrade our our equipment with this. Um, I do want to get this guy put away, but this is the sower, and he's going to live over there, so let's get that done. I guess he can go in this bay right here. It's not like uh, anything else has got to be pulled in to get seed. So yeah, he can take the middle one. So, drop him off, go forward, and what? Let's get this trailer put away. Where is a way for the trailers? I don't know. The back side of the, of the uh, workshop here? Could be. Oops, wrong way. Yet, yeah, I'm going to have to switch that back. I switched that last episode, and that's driving me nuts now. So, I need to respond more quickly to the... Uh, yeah, so it immediately goes into uh, re reverse. I like that better. So that is... Yeah, that's it. Now, where does this guy live? We could pull through and drop it off as we pull through kind of a thing, though I'd rather pull through from the back side. So the tongue is out there waiting to, to uh, pop onto it again. So I guess something like this. And leave it right about here. Yeah, that works. This trailer over here, let's just pull it forward a little bit. There you are. 
and we'll leave him out over here. Okay. So, what are we doing now? Drop this off. You know what we could do? Let's do something else. Then we'll go up there and run the weeder. Leave this guy here. And leave the center to pull through if we need to. Let's grab the pickup truck. Clean it off. And then let's play with changing its color. looks clean. Though the... Oh, the floorboards are clean too. Wow. I'm impressed. Alright, we'll park this guy here. And let's see how this works. R? Yeah. There's a pickup. The pickup rodeo. It's valued at 11000 right now. So we could sell it from this point. Or we can customize it. Now, we are running 100 horsepower. That's the size of our engine. For another $10,000, we could up it to a 165 horsepower. For another $20,000, we can get up to 190 horsepower. Which is more powerful than any of the tractors we presently own. So that's actually quite impressive. But we're not going to go that route. We're going to leave that as it is, and we're going to choose a new color. So, a deep green might be kind of nice. Something in a brown. Hmm. Hadn't thought ahead of time what it would be. The newer one, I've seen it out on the road in black, and it looks pretty good. I don't know if this thing's going to look good in black. I'm thinking a dark red, dark green, dark blue, or brown. Unfortunately, I can't see it. So we just have to imagine it that color. We'll go with the brown. It's only 400 to do it. So we can, we can try another color later if this doesn't look all that good. Wheel setup. Standard or design 2 through 8. So let's go with design 2. No idea what that is. Kind of memorize what it looked like now. And that is the current color of it. I think we'll leave it at that for the moment. Though what would be more realistic? What are these? Nothing. I can't choose them. Okay. More realistic would be... Well, more realistic, probably more like rust. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we'll skip that one. We'll just go with these two changes. So we're going to change the rim, basically. And we're going to go to a brown. That's $700. Customize. You can lease the paint color. Now, that's kind of odd. Certain things should not be leasable. Anyway, do you want to purchase it for that? Yes. And okay. And what have we got? Oh, two-tone. No, it isn't. It's just the reflections. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Kind of a gold brown, in a sense. I wish I could pop the hood. Oh, and there's the, uh, the new wheel design. So this one, you can actually see through it. There's the, the, uh, the rotors there, the discs. And what should be the drum, though. It looks like they're using the same for both. But yeah, that looks good. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. So let's back this guy up. Park him over here. And that's enough playing around. Let's go run that weeder. See how that works. Sowing is done. Once that gets cultivated, it'll become the first layer of fertilizer. We've already plowed everything. And we're going to need to... Uh, get the fertilizer sprayer 
to go over the top of, of each of these layers. But at a one to one time scale, we've got time to do this and still go and do that, I'm pretty sure. So let's open this up. Get our wings out. So a little different this time. We're actually working for ourselves. But now we're going to do a good job. Put him down. And let's go nice and slow. I want to time to see what this is actually doing. Get myself lined up better. Right there. So is it acting like another layer of fertilizer, I wonder? There's really nothing in there that's disappearing. There are no weed stalks, right? I don't see anything besides the canola. No. So it is, it's only changing the soil color, like it's stirring up the soil. So what is it doing otherwise? Our map, let's go to the soil composition. We have just gone up one level of fertilization. Interesting. Let's go to the help menu. How would we find that out? Okay. None of those look like the right category. None of those. There's no fertilizing. All right, so I get a sense it's in here. Fertilizers. Does this also talk about? It doesn't. It doesn't talk about uh, oilseed radish. So we need to get into something that breaks it down to that. Okay, customizing equipment, selling equipment. Equipment lifespans. How the leasing works. Icons. Okay. So all the different icons. Five. Compatibility. Shows compatible vehicle tool, uh, vehicles and tools. Okay. Six. Information gives a general explanation. Okay. So what's next? Grabbing objects, so basically how the game works physically. Weather forecast. That's right, I was going to check to see the weather forecast. Um, where is that? Okay, well, we'll look for that next. And basics. So I never really got into the weeder. Huh. Well, I'll see if I can find this off camera because I'm drawing a blank here. Where is your weather forecast? I thought it'd be one of those tabs, but I've never noticed myself blasting past it. It's not. So where do you find weather? Is there another scroll bar on one of these? No. Weather used to be one of these choices in 15 and I believe 13. I'm not getting a sense of that now. Uh, we have sunshine up there next to the time. But there used to be a way to see your 7-day forecast or your 5-day forecast. If I back out further, it doesn't really get any quieter, does it? That's a shame. I'm going to set the cruise control on this one, so I'm not using my pedal as much. So, three. Okay. Just in case using the pedal is part of what causes the game to lag. Okay. Oops, I'm missing my edge over there. I do want to do this one nice and clean. So when I hit V, I'm probably going to go out of control, aren't I? So I... Oops, wrong pedal. Here's the brake. Spin you around. Stay controlled. Alright, and then V is that button. There we go. Talking myself through it. So here's more of an economy cab. This is a 
a lower priced tractor. What are we doing out here? We are drifting. Okay, I think I'm going to stay out of this mode for most of this. Because in here, it's really hard to tell whether you're hitting that line or not. do a little bit of overlap. Alright, so this button is going around and this button. Okay, so I guess that's how I do it. A little bit of overlap here, just like that. Anyways, I want to zoom in on the animation here a little bit. There are leaves that are flying off of it, so it's implying that you're ripping up weeds and tossing them, you know, where am I? All over the place. Drift back out a little bit. I don't pull that good right there. So, next episode I want to get into uh, some forestry. Just manual forestry at this point. We can't afford the big equipment. But we can definitely afford a chainsaw, and we'll use the, uh, the pickup truck and, the, and the, uh, the, the trailer we've already got. That'll allow us to do an awful lot uh, on a low budget. Search that to see if it's possible to put a corn header on our existing uh, combine harvester rather than buying a specialized one just for the corn. It seems like there was one header that was pretty universal. I just have to verify that. But I don't want to put in a crop that I don't have the equipment to, uh, to harvest. Because that's just more money we don't have to spend. We could be spending on other things. You know, I want to spend some money on baling technology and get some hay bales going just to, just to see how that works. Just to get at least some exposure to all the different uh, processes that uh, Farming Simulator 17 has to offer. And then we'll start to specialize. And eventually work our way up to the big equipment that we really will only be able to see by contracting at this point. over there, or is it one and a quarter passes over there? <laughs> so weeding takes the place of a layer of fertilizer. Interesting. the initial cost of this piece of equipment is going to save you on fertilizer charges for the rest of the, the, the game, basically. 
assuming that the uh, equipment life span is, is that long. I wonder, let me make this turn here, I want to check something. Yep, one and a quarter passes. Okay, in that case, let's cut into this one and make sure we don't miss any little slivers like that. But if I hit G, it doesn't tell me the hours of the, tra of the implement attached to the tractor. I'm only getting the 32.1, no matter. I see G doesn't switch me. Hmm. Okay. So it's basically saying that this menu controls everything here, the tractor and the uh, implement. Okay. So I can't switch over and look at the running hours on, on this piece of equipment, but I would imagine it's not going to get that much use. By the end of the game, we may have put, I don't know, 20 to 30 hours on it. So this should last us the rest of this, of this Let's Play series. So, yeah, for the rest of the game then, the rest of the series, this piece is going to take the place of one layer of fertilizer. So that's definitely a uh, whoa. Get back over there. A cost that was that was worth it to get early in the, in the series. All right, that finishes this one. Then we'll go over and do that one. I don't know if there's a reason why you you have to go the direction that it was planted in this case. I feel like we're crossing over furrows. Imagine that I could go the opposite direction for warranty over here. Okay. It'd be nice to get a mod that has a four-wheel drive Jeep or something. Go climb that hill over there with it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, the sun is getting lower. It's noticing the uh, the colors are changing. A little oranger. All right. So, the curiosity, hop over to our map, and fertilization looks pretty good. Miss a little spot right where I'm at, actually. We'll run the length right here. Head over to 14. There we go. We'll run this length here. Though some of it is where the plow didn't finish. That's probably what uh, some of those discolorations are. The plow misses the little bits right here at the end. But the cultivator hit it. So there's seed there. It's just not going to get that extra 10% bonus of the plow. Okay, so let's hit uh, V and X. Build real quick. Now I don't know if weeding it actually, I was going to say, let's see, X, does anything to the oilseed radish. I would imagine you have to have that, that other weeder to have any, uh, any kind of interaction with it. So we'll use a cultivator on that. Looks like we're out. So let's go a little bit further. Like that. Okay, V, go for it. Hit the cruise control. There it is. Now, if we're going to overlap like that, boy, I'm already outside of it, aren't I? Okay, right there. Yeah, as as you move up and down the uh, the hills, it throws the tractor off a little bit to one side or another. It won't hold true. And all the bumping around does uh, throw you off. I'm already in the edge over there. So I'd have to, to be doing this in cab, I'd almost have to be steering there the whole time. And that's kind of annoying. But it's so much quieter in here to talk. Yeah, I'm already drifting again. Yeah, i got to be out there to see what I'm doing, unfortunately. Oh, something like that. Back and away from this process doesn't change the volume, does it? 
movement to here is, is just as loud. It's only when it's hired hand that it gets excessively loud and then backs out to the same volume here. And you do see the difference. It is like putting down a layer of fertilizer. Why would that be? So I guess chopping up and tilling in the, the uh, weeds will kind of create a mulch or compost in there. Maybe that's what they're what they're trying to do. Oops. Did that a little too early. There we go. So I wonder if it's simulating the same effect as the uh, oil seed radish in that case. That might be it. So basically doing some some green mulch in here with either the oil seed radish or with the weeds. I'm not sure. We'll test it on that other field and see if we get yet another layer of fertilizer out of it that early in the, in the process. I am barely hitting my edge over here, so i got to start paying attention. Oh, there's the bright yellow out there of the uh, canola fields. Maybe we'll harvest that thing one of these days if it's still available. Okay, that button's around. Hit it again for the brakes and line up. Something like that. Yeah, it's a different feeling doing your own crop compared to contracting. Contracting, it's all about speed. Get as much money out of it as possible. It's kind of unfortunate it does that. It would be nice to have it uh, instead give you the bonus for the how good a job you did. Getting every last plant gives you the most bonus. That, that makes more sense to me. Because it kind of coaxes you into doing a poor job in order to get the most money. The, the way it is. I'd much rather do a nice job for a neighbor and get oops, get paid for his appreciation by, uh, by doing the best job for him that he can. That's just the way I am. That's the noble part of Noble Rambler. Driving back and forth in this field over and over again. That's the ramble part. <laughs> Rambling on back and forth. Back and forth. So we're coming up on 6 p.m. soon. Can we finish this field? I'm just about there. Dark, I want to say, is oh, at least 8. 8, it's getting pretty twilight, 8 p.m. Or would that be 20 hundred hours here? I wonder if you can switch that from military time. Whoops. Back up and redo that. Right there. So I guess I'm back there thinking it's quieter, but it's not. So I may as well be over in here and see the details a little better. Though it is easier to see if you are uh, in the right position up there. Let me do that. We're down in the thick of it here. There we go. Flinging dirt in our face. the way it distorts as you're looking through the exhaust. In fact, can we say anything? We turn around here. Okay, we're in there. Get the, uh, the lights. I believe, well, at night, I think, it reflects on the exhaust. We're not going to get it here. But uh, when it does hit dark, we'll see if there's anything to harvest. Maybe we'll do one uh, episode of harvesting in the dark with all the lights on. It's kind of fun to watch, especially if it's your own field. And the harvester's got all of his lights on, and he's going through the field, and you're pulling up behind it with your tractor and trailer to dump them off. And 
all these lights are lighting up everything. It is dark everywhere else you look. It's a real interesting effect. It's fun to watch. All right, last pass. And then I was thinking this would be an episode. We're only at 30 minutes right now, so maybe we will sneak out and we'll get the, uh, the logging equipment. Now to take them down, load the trailer, get out there to dump it off and back, it might be pretty much an hour. So maybe we'll drop the trees this episode. And then uh, next episode, pick them all up, load them, and Our, uh, our consistency here in a moment. Okay, so break and let's put this guy in the air. Look to see how we did. Zoom in on us. So we ran this one again and it didn't help. This one, that's a plowing issue there and all these red marks are plowing issues. So actually we're over here in this one. So this one's good. All right, this one we can't do anything with until we get first stage of growth on this guy, which is this color here. So this is seed. First stage of growth is actually that second one there. So we are done with our fields for now. So X, pull this guy up, let's drive it in, put him away. And we are going to run out of room for equipment soon. There's a lot of storage space in there, but there's a lot of stuff to buy. So all this stuff goes in this bay, and I get the sense that this is going to be used kind of the least. Well, probably as often as the plow, for that matter. Okay, we'll put it in front of the plow, because we will need to plow anything again for three more fields, three more uh, yields. So we'll go here, something like this. Yeah, that's good. So V to put them down. And then Q, drop them off. All right, so, oops, it's the wrong button. The equipment we need to pick up is a three-point hitch. So let's go back to the, uh, to the shop with this guy. And it's getting the cab where it's quieter. I didn't miss anything, did I? No, everything is weeded. Thing is so well, we're good uh, we could put front loader attachments on all the tractors now who's that to think about when we do get uh, pigs and cows going we're going to want to leave a tractor at each of those places with a front loader on it There's a lot of blind spots. I assume there are no cars coming, but behind that bar right there could be one if I didn't wait for a moment to see if he pulled into view. But there are blind spots in some of these cheaper tractors. The more expensive ones seem to have a much bigger radius of view, unobstructed, more curved windows and whatnot. But we're on a budget, so this is what we've got to work with. Seven minutes to six p.m. Get to see the nightlife of Maplefield. <laughs> see if they uh, if they go cruising down the main street at night. All the teenager, all the teenage zombies. I think I noticed a movie theater. I wonder what they do here for fun at night. Besides uh, harvest fields. It does seem to be quite uh, farming oriented, doesn't it? Okay, clear, clear. If I go really fast. Yep. 
that guy. Not here yet, I can pull right in front of him. And just to change things up, we'll pull into here this time. I'm sure the lady who owns the station wagon is not too nervous. Okay, hop out. So, I want to get the stump grinder. Which is over by the chainsaws. Let's go to the chainsaw first. What brand? They're all the same price. There's no other indication as far as quality. Uh, scroll the mouse. Did I just buy it? I double clicked accidentally. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I just buy a Husqvarna? Um, let's see here. Pull out. If I did, then if I roll the scroll wheel. Yep. I just bought a Husqvarna. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I guess that was answered for me. Alrighty. Now let's go back in and do that differently. Uh, forestry. Alright. I want this guy. What is this? This one with a tree saw you can cut down trees all right so this must is it like a three-point hitch on the back of a tractor you back into a tree and and cut it I'm not sure I've never used that one um, and there are no contracting jobs that I'm aware of for forestry so we're just gonna have to buy it and find out what it does but this guy plants seedlings this guy mounts up and hauls. I'm assuming that it needs a dolly. Yeah. So it's a semi-truck. You can dolly onto that and then take that to the back of a trailer, a uh, back of a tractor. Otherwise it'd be a, a tractor, meaning like a semi-truck that would attach to this one. This guy has a little crane. You sit here and it picks up logs and drops it in. Almost tips it over as you get the bigger logs. Um... That, I'm guessing, is a chipper. Trunks into wood chips. You cannot do very large trees. This guy, you can do very large trees. And this guy, same thing. Okay. And then you can get into the cab of these guys and clamp onto a tree, and, and the, little, the saw blade here will, will chop it up, and you can use it like a crane to set it down into a trailer. So three hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. We are at the five thousand dollar mark. <laughs> so we're going for this one, and no options. So buy, yes, back. And I'm curious. The um, what I thought was sweet potatoes. The sugar beets. Where is the group of there beet harvesting? What did that guy cost? Yeah, that's a half a million dollars for that guy alone. And then, oh, there's one that's even bigger? Let's see. This guy combines harvest the indicated fruit types. Uh, for a combine to work, it also needs a suitable header. Oh, so combines harvest, not combine. So combines harvest sugar beets. With this guy as the header which chews up the uh, the tops okay what does this guy do the machine can collect sugar beets from the ground and tip them into a trailer okay now i wonder if this guy will attach to the front and also take off the tops otherwise you're over here with this guy first taking off the tops and then this guy behind you taking, uh, um, pulling the, uh, the sugar beets out of the ground and flipping them into the hopper. And you've got, it only work on straight runs. Well, this guy really is supposed to only work on straight runs too. We were misusing it by turning corners, but you're going to have to make straight rows to take off the tops, pass by the length of your tractor, and then use this guy to pull the sugar beets out of the ground or do it in two passes. And then you've got the flexibility of making turns because you can uh, you don't have the the space in between anyway yeah you are uh, you're basically 450 to no, 550 to 600,000 for this whole setup here 
Anyway, we've got what we came here for. We got a chainsaw, and we've got the uh, uh, the stump grinder. So we'll jump back in here, fire him up, back him up, go into this guy. lower down onto the stump. Let's see, uh, your controls are kind of like the forklift, so I believe you click left mouse and swing it, up and down will lower it. So we'll pop it up in the air for travel, I think. Yeah, either way, it's pretty dangerous. And right, we'll put our, uh, our beacons on, saying, uh, watch out folks, and we'll take the back route, rather than drive out on the highway. Okay. Nobody going, coming from there. Let's pop back in the cab. He's turning in, he's turning in, and we're clear. Okay. Distracted here. I've got a second monitor and I've got to set to my, my Gmail and any comments that come in on videos popping over there. I'm just watching uh, uh, KLCB Soft popping in talking about uh, Catherine's new RimWorld episode. If you are, are uh, watchers of RimWorld and you've seen Cathra in the, uh, in the comment sections, if you click on her name, you go over to her channel, she's tried to record her first episode for her YouTube channel, just to see what it's like. So it's kind of fun to to uh, pop over there and watch that. She's got a little colony set up on, on RimWorld, and, and uh, it, was a, it was a fun episode to watch. So, go over there and say hi, and and, uh, and give her some support, and, and if she gets better equipment and better uh, experience at it, I have a feeling uh, we're going to get some real fun series out of her. I'm going to definitely keep my, my eye on or you subscribe to her. But here's our turn. And a little better this time than with the weeder. It kind of felt like it was going to tip over. All right, so we need to be on the other side of this field. And it's a... What is it? Glass half full, half empty. Doesn't matter if I turn left or right. It's the same distance. Or is that uh, six of one, half dozen of the other? Probably a better analogy. So we want those trees right there. Where am I at? About 45 minutes or so into the episode. Yeah, we can go through and demonstrate one, and then next time do it for real. Yeah, let's do that. Actually, I'm going to back up, though. Just because we're dropping trees, and I don't want to uh, drop it on my tractor. So in this case, you roll the... Uh, the scroll button, the middle button on the mouse, and your chainsaw pops out. And then right click and, and side to side will twist it. Your control on the keyboard drops you to a squat or a crouch. So as you get close enough to the tree, you see that blue line. Change your angle. Normally, you would cut through halfway like this. Actually, yeah, you cut through halfway like this then let me raise it up. So half through at a diagonal and then down half through like this. Then you come through the back side and finish the cut. And the tree would lean into that wedge you've just popped out on this side. And you can kind of aim your tree where you want it to go. That's so how you cut a tree down. In Farming Simulator, you cut through flat and it will drop to the left side, generally how it works. So an angle tends not to, to work as well, only works sometimes. So we'll get in like so, hold it till it goes all the way through, even if it looks like it's through, and it'll drop to the left side. So that's how it works here. In real life, you'll go through and cut off all the branches. In this case, you just walk the length of it, and it simulates cutting branches on both sides. They disappear as you go. That's how that works. 
Weight-wise, this is a smaller diameter trunk. I can probably lift about like so. You want... Let me turn that off. If you're doing this with a crane and a trailer, then you want as long of, of a log as possible. In fact, if you can get this thing onto your trailer, you get the most money for it. But we're going to be lifting this by hand. And also, when you get down to the end here, I don't know what the length is. We get to a certain point and cut it, the whole end goes away. So you want to take this as long as you can possibly take it and still be able to lift it. I'm going to guess I can lift that length. So turn that, crouch, move in, and let's cut that one right there. Can I lift this? It'll say too heavy if you can't, and I can. Alright, we'll do that, and I'm going to go for a guess of about here. Now you don't have to crouch. It's kind of hard to see where your cut was. Yeah, I can lift it, okay. You don't have to crouch, you can cut it from here, but the graphics will spend 30 seconds getting down there to the tree before it finally starts to cut. So if you crouch, it just goes faster. That's there. I'm going to cut this guy. Can I lift this? I don't think I can. I can? Oh, good. Then I got three logs out of that. So next episode, well, let's cut the trunk. We'll do that. Let's move this guy over. Next episode, we will bring the uh, trailer over and cut all those trees and all those trees and get everything loaded up. But let's try the stump grinder, see how this works. Swing him in like so. Swing him partner around and around. Okay, that's a good angle there. And we'll leave the uh, tractor running. Let's see here. We don't need to switch implements. It's uh, the same menu for both. That's basically how it works. B turns it on. V lowers your stretch to kind of absorb the weight of this guy. And then hold down the, was it the left mouse? Yeah, left mouse aims you. Like so. And then up and down sets you in place. So B turns it on. I kind of wish it was at a different angle. That screen should be down there hitting the wood chips, but it's way up in the air, and I don't see any way to adjust that. That's not doing any good. Why is that not grinding? What did I miss? I'm going to need to back up a little bit. Oh, I'm in the air? Looks like the, uh, the feet here are hovering. What am I missing here? V lifts it. Okay, that didn't do any good. I'm going to back up a little. Like so. On. Oh, I'm missing a step, but I don't know what it is. Okay, I'm just going to try from a different angle. Might just be a little glitch there. It worked fine for me otherwise. I've done this once before on my own map, and it was a lot of fun. So back into this guy. Too far. Back to my, my pedal here. Just like that. So let's B. Yep, it's already working. So yeah, now it's working. So you would do that. It will grind its way down. Go back and forth like you would in a real tree. Real trunk. Grind it off till you're down at the ground level and you're done. So that will take away the obstacle that the stump would have represented as if running into a tree. And this will allow you to mow this whole field here once you take all these stumps out. So that is the goal. I don't think I'm going to take those out. I want to leave as many trees as possible. But if you've got a tree that's just in a really bad spot for harvesting, then you, you have a way to get rid of it. So with that, I think I'm going to call this one done. Uh, we've got to wait now for all of these other steps to happen, which is probably going to be, well, unless we do this one in the dark, it's probably going to be in the morning. So I think logging is going to be our last 
major operation in daylight until uh, day two officially starts. So, call this one done. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Noble Rambler. I will catch you next time, folks. Bye-bye.